The military strength of a nation is in its arsenal of weapons, and it is no shock that the U.S. Navy has one of the most formidable fleets of aircraft carriers in the world. There is, however, a challenge. The Chinese anti-ship missiles, built specifically by the Chinese to destroy the U.S. ships. The U.S. Navy has, however, sprung to action and they have started incorporating state-of-the-art laser technologies to ramp up their fleets of carriers. Do you think these lasers have what it takes to take down the Chinese missiles? Does the U.S. have more to be afraid of? Join us as we explore the capabilities of these lasers and how they are set to enhance the efficiency of the U.S. aircraft carriers. It is no secret that there are increasing tensions in the Pacific with rebels intensifying their operations and targeting ships they believe are linked to the United States or Israel. This has led to U.S. Navy warships increasingly finding themselves in the line of fire. It is amidst these tensions that the United States' latest aircraft carrier, the Gerald R. Ford class, set sail for the first time. Just recently, the U.S. Central Command reported that the USS Kearney responded to four attacks on three different commercial vessels off Yemen's coast, even shooting down drones. As if this was not enough, China now has new anti-ship missiles that can move at hypersonic speeds above Mach 5, which is a potential threat to the Ford and the entire Pacific fleet of the Navy. A report from the Congressional Research Service raised some serious questions about the survivability of Navy surface ships in potential combat scenarios. The concern is particularly high when facing foes like China, who are armed with anti-ship missiles. China is pretty open about the purpose of these weapons. They have stated that the weapons are designed to repel American ships. In fact, one of their weapons testing sites has full-size replicas of U.S. aircraft carriers. And guess what? They use these mock-ups for shooting training to determine how strong their missiles are and how best to upgrade them to have an advantage over ships belonging to the United States. Its missiles are indeed capable of catastrophic destruction and damage. For example, they have developed a DF-21D, which is a ballistic nuclear missile that is 35 feet tall and can destroy ships from a distance of 1,000 miles. This missile weighs at least 32,000 pounds and can be launched from the ground or air. This particular missile is super interesting and concerning because of its nuclear warhead's ability to maneuver in a fight, which means it can adjust its trajectory to hit moving ships. Then there is the DF-26, which stands more than four stories high and boasts an impressive range. But the real game changer here is the DF-ZF, which is a hypersonic missile that can reportedly reach speeds of Mach 10 and launch attacks from more than 500 miles away. What sets the DFZF apart from the DF-26 and other missiles is its flight path. While most missiles fly in a conventional arc, making them more susceptible to interception, the DFZF remains highly maneuverable. Can the Ford defend itself in combat situations from these missiles? The Ford is equipped with a range of anti-missile defenses, but when it comes to a long-term battle against China's newest weapons, these defenses might not be enough. So, what's the solution? The Navy is betting big on a technology that's been elusive for years. Lasers. Now why lasers? Well, they come with some pretty impressive advantages. First off, they're powered by a substantial fuel source, and the massive nuclear reactors on Ford are perfect for this. Lasers fire at light speed, effectively countering the velocity of hypersonic weapons. They can also reload swiftly to ward off drone swarms. Plus, they don't need ammunition storage, which means ships can fire almost endlessly. It's a game changer for maintaining dominance in the Pacific. Recently, the engineers of this carrier have been testing lower-powered lasers. In fact, one of these lasers was tested, and it shot down a drone. Let us analyze the build and design of the U.S. Gerald R. Ford. This aircraft carrier is a $13.3 billion marvel that's the largest and priciest warship ever to hit the seas. 
This colossal vessel features a massive five-acre flight deck and is packed with cutting-edge technologies. These advancements are designed to keep it, and carriers like it, at the forefront of naval power well into 2050 and beyond. They are currently being built for the United States Navy, with plans to acquire 10 of these ships and to replace existing carriers on a one-for-one -one basis, starting with the lead ship, Gerald R. Ford CVN-78, which replaces the Enterprise CVN-65 and later the Nimitz-class carriers. The ship's design is similar to the Nimitz class, but they're equipped with technologies developed with the CVN-X, CVN-21 program. One such technology is the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System emails. These carriers have been a key part of the U.S. power projection strategy since the first one, the Nimitz. For instance, when fully loaded, a Nimitz class carrier displaces about 100,000 tons. It can steam at speeds over 30 knots, that is 56 kmh or 35 mph, cruise for 90 days without the need to replenish its fuel level, and can also launch aircraft to hit targets that are far off in a distance. The durability of these carriers is truly impressive. For example, the USS Theodore Roosevelt spent 159 days at sea during an operation without stopping at a dork to get refueled. And over the years, the design of these carriers has been updated to incorporate new updates in technology. However, they do have some limitations when it comes to supporting the latest tech advances. The biggest challenges for the Nimitz class are twofold. First, there's the issue of limited electrical power generation capability. Second, the upgrades have led to an increase in ship weight, which in turn has worn away the center of gravity margin that's crucial for sustaining ship steadiness. The U.S. Navy initiated what was first known as the CVN-21 program after taking the limitation of the Nimitz-class carriers into consideration. This new class was later remolded to the CVN-78 variant, now known as the Gerald R. Ford. This carrier featured several improvements to make it more efficient and powerful. Some of the upgrades include a bigger flight deck, upgrades to the weapon and material handling, and a better propulsion plant design that does not require a lot of people to maintain and operate. This ship also features a new and smaller island that is located at the back, and due to advancements in electromagnetics, they were able to develop an electromagnetic aircraft launch system advanced arresting gear, and an integrated warfare system to make it easier for the ship to go on military operations. Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMALS for short, are systems that launch aircraft using a catapult that's powered by a linear induction motor. This is a big change from the steam piston used on the Nimitz class carriers. So, what makes EMALS special? Well, it accelerates aircraft in a smoother manner, which means less stress on the aircraft's structure. It is also lighter, expected to be more cost-effective, and requires less maintenance compared to a steam piston-driven system. While the hydraulic system has been effective for over 50 years, the AAG system offers several improvements. For instance, the current system struggles to capture unmanned aerial vehicles without causing damage due to the extreme stresses on the airframe. This is because UAVs don't have the necessary mass to drive the large hydraulic piston used to trap heavier manned airplanes. The AG system, on the other hand, uses electromagnetics. The energy absorption is controlled by a turboelectric engine, which makes the trapping process smoother, reduces shock on airframes, and is safer and reliable, and requires less maintenance. The Gerald R. Ford class of aircraft carriers aren't just ordinary carriers. They're equipped with an integrated active electronically scanned array search and tracking radar system. This is a game changer in the field of naval warfare. Now let's talk about the dual band radar or DBR for short. This technology was developed by none other than Raytheon, a major player in the defense industry. The DBR was designed for two types of vessels, the Zumwalt-class guided missile destroyers and the Gerald R. Ford-class aircraft carriers. One of the key advantages of this system is its compact size. 
by replacing six to 10 traditional radar antennas with a single six-faced radar, the island on the ship can be kept significantly smaller. But how does the DBR work? It's quite fascinating. It combines the X-band AN-SPY-3 multifunction radar with the S-band AN-SPY-4 volume search radar emitters. These are distributed into three-phased arrays, creating a powerful and efficient radar system. The DBR is divided into two parts, the X-band radar and the S-band radar. Each part has three faces dedicated to it. The X-band radar is responsible for low-altitude tracking and radar illumination. This means it's crucial for detecting and tracking objects at lower altitudes. On the other hand, the S-band radar handles target search and tracking. The best part? It can do this regardless of the weather conditions. Rain or shine, the S-band radar is always on the job. Now here's where it gets really interesting. The DBR operates simultaneously over two electromagnetic frequency ranges. This is a big deal because it's the first time this functionality has been achieved using two frequencies coordinated by a single resource manager. The inner workings of the new radar system on the Gerald R. Ford are a marvel of modern engineering. It has no moving parts, which means it requires minimal manpower for operation. Let's break down how it works. The AN SPY 3 is a key component of this system. It consists of three active arrays and the receiver exciter, or REX cabinets, that are located above decks. Below, you'll find the signal and data processor, or SDP, subsystem. The volume search radar, or VSR, has a similar architecture. It includes beam forming and narrowband down conversion functionality, which are housed in two additional cabinets per array. At the heart of the system is a central controller, known as the Resource Manager, which resides in the Data Processor, or DP. This is the first radar system to use a central controller and two active array radars operating at different frequencies. Powering this system is the Common Array Power System, or CAPS. This includes Power Conversion Units, or PCUs, and Power Distribution Units, or PDUs, to keep everything running smoothly, the DBR is cooled via a closed-loop cooling system called the Common Array Cooling System. The Ford can carry four squadrons of fighter jets, along with a host of support and tactical aircraft. In total, it can hold over 60 planes, but has the capacity to accommodate up to 90. Its air power surpasses that of at least 60 countries, and it's home to more stealth fighters than the entire Russian armed forces. The Ford is an impressive aircraft carrier that stands over nine stories above the waterline and tips the scales at 97,000 tons. To put that into perspective, it's 32,000 tons heavier than the largest battleships of World War II, but don't let its size fool you. This behemoth is anything but slow. Thanks to a pair of advanced A-1B nuclear reactors, the Ford boasts nearly triple the power of America's existing supercarriers. We're talking about a whopping 3 megawatts of electrical power, according to the Navy. Moving on to the future of the proposed defense systems on the Gerald R. Ford class of aircraft carriers. These future systems, which include free electron laser-directed energy weapons, electric armor, and advanced tracking systems will require a significant amount of power. But here's the interesting part. Only half of the electrical power generation capability on the Gerald R. Ford class, also known as CVN-78, is needed to run the currently planned systems, including the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMALS, this means that CVN-78 will have the power reserves that the previous Nimitz class lacked to run high-energy systems like lasers and electric armor. This is a huge leap forward in naval technology. But the advancements don't stop there. The addition of new technologies, power systems, a redesigned layout, and improved control systems results in an increased sortie rate of 25% over the Nimitz class. That's a quarter more missions that can be carried out. The Navy is currently developing a cutting-edge technology known as the Free Electron Laser, or FEL for short. 
This isn't just any laser. It's a fourth-generation light source that produces incredibly bright and short pulses of radiation. But how does it work? Well, an FEL operates much like a traditional laser, but with a twist. Instead of using stimulated emission from atomic or molecular excitations, it employs relativistic electrons as a gain medium. This is a game changer in the field of laser technology. Here's where it gets really interesting. In an FEL, a bunch of electrons pass through a magnetic structure, known as an undulator or wiggler. This generates radiation, which then re-interacts with the electrons. The result? The electrons emit coherently, exponentially increasing the intensity of the radiation. This technology is being developed to defend against threats such as cruise missiles and small boat swarms. It's a testament to the incredible advancements being made in naval defense technology. One of the key design features of the CVN-78 class is the improved weapons movement paths. The design largely eliminates horizontal movements within the ship, making the movement of weapons more efficient. The current plans call for advanced weapons elevators to move weapons from storage areas to dedicated weapons handling areas. Sailors would use motorized carts to move the weapons from storage to the elevators at different levels of the weapons magazines. Linear motors are being considered for these advanced weapons elevators. These elevators will also be relocated so they won't impede aircraft operations on the flight deck. The redesign of the weapons movement paths and the relocation of the weapons elevators on the flight deck will significantly contribute to a much higher sortie generation rate. The Gerald R. Ford class was designed with the F-35C in mind. However, delays in the development and testing of the aircraft have had an impact on integration activities on CVN-78. These activities include testing the F-35C with CVN-78 Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMAILS, and the Advanced Arresting Gear System. They also involve testing the ship's storage capabilities for the F-35C's lithium-ion batteries, tires, and wheels. Due to these developmental delays, the U.S. Navy will not field the F-35C until at least 2018, which is one year after the delivery of CVN-78. As a result, the Navy has deferred critical F-35 integration activities. This introduces a risk of system incompatibilities and potentially costly retrofits to the ship after it is delivered to the Navy. Let's address the Chinese ship set to rival the Ford, the Fujian. The ship was named after the Fujian province in China. It was built by the Jiangnan Shipyard and launched on the 17th of June, 2022. As of January 2024, it's currently in the fitting-out stage. What sets the Fujian apart is that it's China's first Catabar aircraft carrier. Catabar stands for Catapult Assisted Takeoff Barrier Arrested Recovery, a system used for the launch and recovery of aircraft from the deck of an aircraft carrier. This design is fully indigenous, meaning it's a product of China's engineering prowess. The Fujian also features an integrated propulsion system and not one, not two, but three electromagnetic catapults. This is a departure from the ski jump flight decks of the previous Chinese aircraft carriers, marking a significant advancement in their naval capabilities. The Fujian is expected to use steam turbines and electromagnetic catapults. This is a significant upgrade from preceding Chinese carriers which launched aircraft using ski jumps. According to Song Jongping, a Chinese military commentator, the Fujian is equipped with an Integrated Power System, or IPS for short. This is a key feature that sets it apart from its predecessors and marks a major advancement in China's naval capabilities. The displacement of this carrier will be similar to the 85,000-ton Soviet aircraft carrier Ulyanovsk, which was never completed, and the United States Navy's 100,000-ton supercarriers. The construction of this carrier was laid down between March 2015 and February 2016. It was launched on the 17th of June, 2022, and as of now, it's undergoing sea trials. 
The Fujian is a Type 003 aircraft carrier with a standard displacement of 71,875 tons and a full load displacement of over 80,000 tons. It measures 300 meters at the waterline and 316 meters at the flight deck. The beam measures 39.5 meters at the waterline and 76 meters at the flight deck. The propulsion system of the Fujian consists of steam turbines, eight boilers, and four shafts, providing over 220,000 horsepower. And for aviation facilities, it features a hangar deck. Due to China's aircraft carriers as well as their anti-ship weapons, warships like Ford are more vulnerable than they have been in eight years, and the defense mechanisms being put in place by the U.S. Navy to protect against these missiles are still underway. For example, to counter these attacks, the Navy has estimated that it will use at least a 300-kilowatt laser that will be able to fire with enough intensity that it will break down the heat-resistant substances that protect the missiles and destroy them. They will also need enough power to overcome the effect of the atmospheric turbulence on the laser and would need a system for quick identification of the precise target point on the incoming missile which would be traveling towards the ship at one mile per second to take it out. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.